American Sniper came out on Christmas Day and it received some criticism. Now, some of the criticism from movie critics was about the plot, the cinematography, things like that. I'm not so concerned about that part. But it also received criticism for not, in the eyes of many critics, accurately portraying the life and view views of the star, or the, I guess I should say the, the main character of the story, Chris Kyle, uh, the aforementioned American sniper who spent time in Iraq and accrued more than 255 kills. He also, however, when he came back to America, wrote a biography in which he was very clear in his uh, desire to continue killing, his bloodthirstiness, the fact that he had no problem with it, and no regret or doubts about what he did while he was in Iraq. We're going to read some of those for you because the response to those criticisms, the fact that they brought up what he believes and what he said in his autobiography is a little bit hard to accept. Kyle described killing as fun, something he loved. He was unwavering in his belief that everyone he shot was a bad guy. I hate the damn savages, he said. I couldn't give a flying fuck about the Iraqis. He bragged about murdering looters during Hurricane Katrina after his service, though that was never substantiated. So not just in Iraq, he also bragged about having killed people here. Now the movie critics who pointed out some of these statements, who talked about them, wrote about them in their blogs, were immediately uh, uh, responded to with a deluge of de both death threats and rape threats as well. We have some of the tweets here for you. Uh, Charlie Brownatier says, Rania Kalek, move your American hating ass to Iraq, let ISIS rape you, then cut your cunt head off. Fucking media whore Muslim, hashtag American Sniper. Yeah. She's a fan, apparently. You know, she appears to be wrong. actually using her real picture. Like, that looks like that's her probably that's her, her real picture. Perhaps. Which, in a weird way, when, so, you know, look, everybody does the anonymous thing where they're, you know, it's a Twitter egg. I always say, you don't debate a Twitter egg. You should never, that's the only piece yeah. of advice that I, if I have <laughs> a child. What? You should never debate a Twitter egg. That's my thing. Mm -hmm. You can't debate the egg. Mm -hmm. uh, but that someone puts that kind of They're vile picture. filth with their own picture, you got to kind of respect it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I respect it. Uh, Ronald Hammond says, Rania, maybe we to take your ass over there and give it to ISIS, dot, 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 dumb bitch. Benjamin Williams says, waterboarding is far from torture. I wouldn't mind giving you two a demonstration. Very helpful. That's adding that. Who, no, so what, what did Rania Kalek say exactly? So she, she mentioned, so she had a, a written review of the movie where she talked about him, his legacy. Uh, he was eventually killed uh, by another veteran suffering from, from PTSD. Um, but she mentioned some of his views and the fact that the movie does not give you a very accurate picture of his, the way he saw Iraqis, the way he saw his job the act of actually killing for his country. It's not necessarily an, an entirely sympathetic view of the Amer American war effort and his actions in particular, but um, apparently does not actually let you know what he was yeah, actually doing. Yeah, you know, like. I, I, we, we did this. I'm sorry, Dave, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say that the, the disturb, look, the, the stuff that he's saying about the Iraqis is obviously horrific. At some level, you can. Uh, you can see these people saying that kind of thing, not rationalizing, but you can see them saying it. They have to sort of get in that mindset to be able to do some of this stuff. Uh, but what he said about the Katrina people is completely yeah. insane. These were Americans that were, you it's know, by a natural, in a, disaster. By a natural yeah. disaster. So I would say they're equally yeah. insane. But, but the um... uh, yeah, yeah, I'm not defending the insanity. I'm just saying these guys, they get there, and I think they have to do weird psychological things to be able so to they shoot have to people. Some yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. So that's what but I. But shooting our own citizens that are dealing with a natural yeah. disaster is like. And different. going there so that he could then shoot them. Like yeah. he went there looking to shoot them. We don't know that it's actually true. He just bragged about having done it. Yeah. And we know he lied about other things. Yeah. That we do know. Yeah. I mean, a court found that he lied about Jesse Ventura. Yeah, so uh, I do want to talk more about the, I guess, not totally surprising American reaction to the criticism of a member of the armed forces. But Ben, you well, are both a reviewer. You've seen the movie. Well, you yeah, have couple, received criticism. A couple of things. First of all, the movie I gave, I think, a 7-2. But I feel like I should have given it a, a better review because I'm still thinking about it. So I think it made more of an impact than perhaps... You know, I'd seen it the night before when we did the review, and, there were, and I liked it. I gave it a seven. I, yeah. That's a recommendation. That says yeah. go see it. But there were things didn't I didn't like. Up it. The score, but it's I didn't seven. jank up the score. No, <laughs> but uh, and you can see our review on on what the flick with me and Christy and uh, Alonzo and Matt. But so the movie stayed with me, um, and so I, I think it's pretty good. But based on what you know of Chris Kyle, just from knowing about him and from his book, I think that uh, Bradley Cooper's portrayal of Chris Kyle is far more textured. As I said in my review, there are a couple of scenes where you see him wrestling with when confronted with the notion that maybe this was a waste of American lives and resources. Mm -hmm. um, one where uh, they read a letter of a friend of his who was killed in combat, and another time when they're like ready to head back out 
and one of his guys is like, really? Why? Like, what, what are we doing? What's the point of this? Yeah. And both times, he's like, what do you mean? No, 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 no. And the reaction the audience has is not like, yeah, rock Chris Kyle. Right. I'm certain that it's like, oh, he doesn't get it. He doesn't get it. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so then I came out and, and thought that, that he has got to tell himself, given everything he did, credited with more than 150 kills, he claims more than 250 kills. Either number is really irrelevant. They're both High. astronomical. Yeah. As John Kerry said, uh, risking your life for your country is one thing. Killing another man for your country is something else, let alone killing a woman, which Chris Kyle uh, also did, killing people who were, at some point, civilians, right? So I suggested that Chris Kyle was perhaps, at least in the movie, playing tricks with himself because mm. I thought there is no possible way what this character was saying, whether it's the real Chris Kyle or Bradley Cooper and Clint Eastwood's idea of him. Mm -hmm. There's no way that this guy was going to say, I killed 150 people for my country and now you're telling me it wasn't worth it? I block that out. Mm. Especially when you consider that he did it as a sniper. And I know the value of snipers. But I thought that snipers might feel and, and because Kyle's character in the movie feels this way. That I'm up here, I want to be down in it. That there has to be something psychological that eats at you when you sit relatively safe. Yeah. Of course, you could be killed at any moment by a, a, a tank that spots your perch mm. and blows you up. And I get that, although the Iraqis didn't have tanks. Um, but with a rocket launcher, you could be killed. Yeah, or just going about your day as a, sniper, a soldier. A sniper is in danger, there's no question. But there is something that I thought a sniper might think was cowardly about the way they went about this. Right. And that Kyle was working against that and then working against this notion um, that he'd wasted his time and that this had all been for naught and he couldn't handle it. Here's the clip from, from what the flick that I'm referencing. And he is determined, which was true of the real Chris Kyle too, he was determined to believe that no matter what, you couldn't possibly have asked me to murder 160 people and shoot them arguably, and hear me out on this, Cowardly. I get the role that snipers have. They had snipers. You got to protect your guys, but killing them from a distance, shooting them conveniently from a distance. And so you can't tell me that I had to kill more than 150 people for my country safely from a distance. And now you're going to tell me that it, that it wasn't worth it? So naturally, clearly, the reaction on uh, YouTube was that, uh, that I said that snipers are cowards. Yes. <laughs> right. And how could I? Blah, 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 blah. So you've been attacked quite a bit. I've been, I, don't know what, I don't know what the definition of quite a bit is. I've gotten some tweets about it, and I did go through the, you know, I never read the YouTube comments. It's a rule. That's a good point. It's a rule I'm never going to break. But I, I read saw it here you reading for this, them, and I was concerned for you. Well, I just, I went into the comments, and then I, uh, and then I assert, word searched coward just to see how many. And, um, and I don't really know how to do it, so. <laughs> and the answer is, I, I don't know what happened. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But there were a fair amount of people, and I got the gist from reading it, that, you know, how can I, you don't know. And obviously, I get it. Every soldier, there's a degree of bravery that every soldier has. And no soldier wants to be told that they just fought and risked their lives. And again, I think what John Kerry said is really significant. Killed for their country. Mm -hmm. Murdered somebody for your country. And now you're being told after the fact that, that maybe we should, why are we going yeah. in the first place? You shouldn't have killed any of those people. Yeah. None of those people deserve to die. This was all a mistake. That's got to be incredibly hard. And it looks to me like the real Chris Kyle was not prepared to confront that. Eastwood and Cooper envisioned a different guy yeah. who was, who seems like if he had not been horribly murdered, might down the road have mm -hmm. confronted some of those things. Right, and also we shouldn't get too hung up on the word coward, or the audience shouldn't get no, too hung no. up on the word coward, simply because there is a fundamental difference if you, forget snipers even, but if you are the guy that's in charge of the drone strikes, totally. you're literally sitting, you, there you are totally secure, yeah. sitting in you know somewhere that's, that's well secure, and you're basically doing something that's the equivalent of a video game yeah. almost, and it could be literally thousands of miles away, uh, versus the guy that's on the ground and, and killing someone face to face. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's hugely and different. Not even in the same so, country. Yeah, so just using the, the coward is, is just. Yeah, yeah, I mean, no, focus on the wrong thing. About, yeah, so I, I think we're focusing yeah. a little bit too much on the, the specific criticism that you got, but we've shown you examples of, especially female movie critics have gotten, just for pointing out things he has literally said. That he said in the movie, for instance, they show him saying, we're not just shooting people carrying Qurans. But apparently in the book he said, but I wanted to. Like he wanted to kill all the males that he saw. Like he was bloodthirsty. That is an objective fact. He said it. We're not saying it about him. He is saying that he enjoyed, that he loved killing people. 
And simply pointing that out is too much for many Americans, especially conservative Americans, to accept. To point out through the words of veterans what they think about the people they kill is too much. Our, our relationship with our military is so tenuous that it is just simply destroyed if you attempt to understand what happens to the, 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 the human brain when you put it in a situation like that. Yeah. I don't know that Chris Kyle was that way before he went to Iraq, but he emerged a different sort of person, um, such that he wanted to kill looters in Hurricane Katrina. And I think that it does not say good things about Americans that we cannot accept even that most obvious of criticisms of our military. Yeah, I mean, anyway. it's just, the, it's a tough thing because, you know, and I, the movie ends with the montage of, uh, of, of Chris Kyle's funeral and, you know, people in the streets and the flag waving. And it's, it's a tough part because they started making this movie, Chris Kyle was alive and he was mm -hmm. working with the movie and, and, and you know, and, and from all accounts, I mean, I, the things he said are just hideous, they're indefensible. But he was asked to do hideous things, terrible things this country asked him to do. We put young men in this situation and I... I regret that enormously, and I don't know how he would have handled it. You know, I mean, he had a wife who loved him, and he had kids who loved him, and and I hope he would have found his way, but he, he never got a chance. But we we are not prepared to. You know, this is crazy, but you know, you watch Downton Abbey. We did the reviews also on what the flick of Downton Abbey, but there's a scene there. It's set now, and now it's in 1924, and the. The, the guy who runs the house, the sort of the Lord or whatever he is. Why am I blanking out? He's Lord, Lord you, you Grantham. Him, right, Lord Grantham. Yeah, right. he's the Lord. Right, the Lord, he's the Lord, he's the Lord, Lord right. Yeah. Um, there's a fight about a, a building a, uh, a monument to the World War I soldiers who died. And somebody comes to the dinner, you know, someone who's not of, uh, of, of you know, proper bearing. And mm. uh, a mere peasant who says, you know, why would we build a monument? It just, it reinforces this notion that it's okay for us to send these boys over to die. And the war was nothing. It was a waste of time and energy mm. and, and killed millions and millions and millions of people. And he says, you are mistaken. Do not say that. Like, that is not allowed to be said. Yeah. And some of this reaction is, do not tell us that in America we send our young boys to die. Yeah. And then we celebrate it afterwards so that, all right, I'm going to say one thing here. that You know, I don't like when we salute the flag, when we honor the military at games. I don't like this sort of, because you can't, if you don't do it, you're a dick. Yeah. Right? And, but all of this, you want to honor them because their sacrifice is enormous and their bravery is unquestioned. I don't do it, right? Mm -hmm. I would like to point out that members of my family did it, but I don't do it, right? And, but when we celebrate it in the way that they talk about raising the statue, we continue to perpetuate this notion perpetuate. that the next time it comes up, man, it's okay. And we never really ask the real questions of maybe we shouldn't do this. Mm -hmm. Maybe this was wrong. 100,000 Iraqis at a kind of a bare minimum, right? Probably a lot more than that. Dead because of us, because of our mistaken invasion. To say nothing of 4,000 Americans and, and thousands more permanently disabled. Dead, done, we blew it. It was wrong, it was yeah. wrong. And we're not, as a country, prepared to do that. What we're prepared to do is put a yellow ribbon on the tree yeah. and every Sunday in San Diego, yeah. give a big round of applause to the brave men and women. And what's the line always given? Who uh, risk their lives to protect our freedoms here. Yeah. Like this logic that, that but so we no but doesn't, there's things. no connection between those things. So I think that's a, I think that's a, I think yeah. it's wrong and I think it's a mistake. That said, this is a, the, I think the movie is more interesting and had developed more than the real Chris Kyle, but the tragedy is the real Chris Kyle was not given a chance to evolve yeah. because he was murdered. One super fast point, just an important point historically from the Young Turks point of view, that people will say, well, who are you to look at this conflict and then say we shouldn't have done it? But it's important to note that Ben was saying, let's not do it before it was done. So yes, I think you're in a great position to say we shouldn't have done this. We should not have put Chris Kyle and literally tens of thousands or more than 100,000 Americans in that sort of situation in the first place. I thought we'd find weapons, though. We all did. It, yeah. You know, yeah. I did. I mean, even didn't think a, it should be done, but I thought we'd find weapons. And a majority of Republicans think today that we did. Yeah, man. Yeah. Right. Part of it because we continue to wave the flag about it and not talk about it. Yeah.